So basically what I've done is taken a 3B, 3B pencil and covered the paper with graphite. So this is like the cheater's way of starting a drawing. And then you need yonder institutional toilet paper because it's super cheap and doesn't have any like lotion-y stuff in it. It's just mm. toilet paper. Mm. So nice. if you use one of the fancy tissues that has like, like puffs or whatever that is so good <laughs> when you have a cold right now. <laughs> You destroy your drawing, right? Because you deposit oils all over your, all over your paper. So you just take, once you cover it, you take it and you just lightly um, rub the graphite into your paper. See what it does? Mm -hmm. uh, it, basically what you're doing is you're pushing graphite into the paper texture. Um, your instinct will be to not want to use a pencil and to use a graphite stick or something, but it'll leave these really dark chunks on there and that'll mess you up later so like I've done this on you know a 30 by 40 piece of paper and just spent like two days covering it but then it makes your drawing go quicker in the end so remember I had you know stole some of your erasers and ripped them out of your your pencils I think I did that to you really. but uh, so here's where you actually can can use an eraser my eraser went. All right. <laughs> I'm an eraser stealer. If I see you using an eraser, wow. so you're, you're, you're an Ignatius now you could um, now you can still work. Um, and here I have my fancy sharpened pencil that you can draw with for a long time because there's a ton of uh, graphite exposed. Hmm. That's what you can do with with, uh, with, with knife sharpening. So um, by now you should be somewhat confident in your structural analysis, right? And you can draw lightly on here and it still shows up. So this is like the ninja technique for value, value drawing. Ninja. Huh? Seriously, ninjas use this. <laughs> Kidding. So I'm doing the normal work, just drawing through the forms, drawing my ellipses, staying loose. So staying loose is really important. Can so you do that with uh, any pencil? You need a 3D? No, any, any pencil. If you use H, it'll scratch the paper. So you don't want to use an H, probably. Um, and you can do it with charcoal, too. You know. So now my background is done. So what I start doing, I can use my eraser as, as my drawing tool. And I can work. I can work in my light areas. Remember we did that. Remember we did that block in um, hmm. drawing like like a couple of classes ago where it looked all messy and gross. Yep. The the one of the um, tape dispenser. Mm. Yeah, so same idea here, right? Is that you take your your large areas of value and you just make them, you assign them a value. You take a guess at what they're going to wind up being, right? And here I can make marks with my eraser as well. Tilting the paper slightly. And my marks now reinforce my linear perspective. See it? Okay. So now what I do, I've worked into the light a little bit and blocked in light areas. So if I kind of hang on to little bits of stuff, I can start to work in my dark areas. Now I've erased over this one shadow, so I can just put it back in, right? Where they intersect. I know that's going to be fairly dark. And then down here, under the ball, got another pretty decent sized shadow. So, boom. Block that in. Uh, 
And I've got a little shadow under the lip of this thing. And then on the bottom there's kind of some anchoring bits. And I have this edge is kind of dark and busted. And then there's shadow down on the ground. Kind of expanding outwards. Generally, when you um, when you start a, a cast shadow from an object, you probably want to make the marks counter to the direction of the edge, right? So if I go like this, there's a chance that that could kill depth. So I can go, I go to at an angle to it. That kind of makes it look slightly better, slightly more real. And then I know that there's a shadow here on this cylinder. That overall, this cylinder is fairly dark. So if I squint, you know, everything has to look light. So maybe I, maybe I should have started with a darker background value. So I could take the background and start knocking the background down. You notice I haven't been working out, like on outlines because outlines don't really define things. It's the shift in value that defines the edge of an object. You know what I mean? That's kind of a uh, quantum mechanics confirmation too, right? Is that there's no real edge to things. Like. I'm touching a pencil, but I'm not. But on the quantum level, not, I'm not touching. Not touching it. It's like atoms bouncing off of each other, or electrons bouncing off of each other. Valence shells, or whatever. Yeah, that's why I'm in an art class, not biology. Right? <laughs> because you can learn things in art class. Now, there's no subject that doesn't make it into art eventually, science or or otherwise. Well, because everything's technically art. Well, it has art potential, right? It's like potential energy. Do you to continue on with the science metaphors? I don't think you, yeah. Besides for drawing food, I don't think you, like a culinary subject would come to art. Can air be art? Oh, Can cooking food art? is art. Actually, yeah, gases. Culinary art. People make like little rose <laughs> yeah. chocolate. Did I tell you about the the guy that was like a a uh, a scientist, like a chemist, and he made like gas chambers? Basically, that you would go and so. you'd go in this gas chamber and breathe gas for X amount of time, and it would do things to your brain or perception. What kind of things? I don't know. He what never he never said in his interviews. Why was, it good or, was it a good kind of thing or a bad? Because who knows if they're fully legal, you know? Well, yeah, that's right. Especially um, after a certain event in World War II. Yeah, exactly. Could be a weed chamber. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Um, Looking at. It just as it is, and not doing darks all around on the outside, and just keeping it like that after you finish. That's it really cool, though. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, what you're trying to do is do less work. Essentially, this is the this is the working smarter, not harder kind of thing. So you want the this like middle value that I started with to do the bulk of the work, right? So now, immediately, anything that's white is going to look like a highlight. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I can know that I want to get to the whitest white of the paper. Um, would you grab that black drawing kit box over there? Two? Yeah, yeah. OK. So like, I don't know. It's dangerous to mix media, but you know, I have like not quite white paper, um, but I have a little bit of white chalk in here. So if I just need to like do something to make junk a little fancier, like you never you never want to overlap this, right? If you can avoid it, because it would change the color. But if I want white, I can add 
a cool white with chalk in there just to heighten things a little further. And then, anybody have needed rubber hand? The squishy eraser? Anybody have one? Can you bring it over? I'll show you how to use it for this purposes. Oh, I'm so good, I don't need erasers. <coughs> well, <laughs> an eraser is a drawing tool, right? It's not a, it's a mark making tool. Mistakes. It's not, it's not a, for mistakes. It's for it's highlighting. Not, yeah, it's not for mistakes, right? I mean, ultimately you will make mistakes in drawing, but the only mistake you can make in drawing is to not follow the process. You know what I'm saying? So, let's say that I, wanna, that I want to quickly shift the value of an area. Um, what I can do, say I want to shift the value of this plane because there's a good amount of light on it. I actually just push and it'll start picking up value, right? And it'll keep the marks that you make under there um, and just pick up the graphite. And you don't have, you can be kind of messy with it and then pick the edge back up again. And then when your kneaded rubber gets dirty, um, save it and keep like old ones because then that'll pick up slighter amounts of graphite, right? So you mm -hmm. can use it as like a very subtle tool. And then here I can actually start picking up bits of, bits of contour, right? You want to avoid these halos. I know that I'm making them right now, but to finish out I would just carry this value all the way out to the edge. You know what I mean? It's just trying to develop the, the feel of this particular thing. I know this is a long demo, but bear with me takes time to do this value stuff. So try this, um, if you do a char charcoal drawing, which you should in class, um, try, that, try out this technique and see, see what you think of it, because um, it's a good one. Especially for charcoal, it tends to go a little faster with charcoal, because you can lay down more material faster. So I see another little subshadow here. Kind of want to make that a little darker. I can make this a little lighter just by pouncing. I have a little cast shadow here. I want to pick back up. And then I squint again, and I just want to make sure that there's a value change between the top plane and the sides, right? So you can just do like a traditional erase with the needed rubber too. Just pull it. I mean, what's messing with me is that I have a cool temperature light on this plane right here and a warm temperature light on that plane, but they're actually about the same value. Mm -hmm. So as a drawing trick, I need to just like pick one to make darker, <laughs> you know. So I'll take the cool one and, and, and decide that that's gonna be the darker one. So I'll take the, the um, warm temperature one and expose a little more of the paper. And I'm kind of doing that because my paper is, has a warm temperature to it too. See how that increases dimensionality a little? But I want to make sure that it's not as bright as, as this surface right here. So I just keep digging in, getting that graphite out of the tooth of the paper. And then, you know, from there, from there on out, it's just, you know, take the time, do the work. Um, but this will shorten the process, the time of the process, right? There's ultimately no shortcuts, but uh, this is definitely a quicker path to a full value drawing than just going, than just depositing graphite down in certain specific areas. And then now this has been the background value, so I gotta take this shadow, I have to bump that up. 
make sure that the box is laying on the ground again. See what that does? So I call this technique pushing values, right? So I'm finding my darkest dark and my lightest light really quickly, and that's opening up the range for everything else to, to happen. So now I'll go ahead and push my darkest darks in, right? Now I've anchored myself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Are there questions? No, no questions, really? I usually have some questions. I want to make sure not to lose the sense of reflected light over here on the cylinder or here. So yeah, I just take it from there and I can render all day from here on out and get like a perfectly rendered thingy. And you do this with any objects, people, whatever. A lot of my life drawings start like this. And if you use toned paper, paper that's already gray, you can use your um, black and white charcoal or whatever, like this. And you can draw your light in with your white and your dark in with your black. So a good middle gray paper is awesome too. Cool. And then just remember that, you know, when you're analyzing value, don't get tripped up because every time there's a change in plane, there's a change in value, right? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So every time that an angle changes on the object, there's a new value. So when you're going around a curve, there's going to be continuous transition of value the whole time. Right? And that there has to be a shift in value between these two. That's why I put it in there and between the top. Okay, and then just be careful, don't forget overall value of a piece, right? So if, there, if that ball were black, you know, I'd be working in the five to 10 range for that, for that sphere. Whereas this, I'm working in the one to five 